Okay, everybody, uh, it's Brett. So welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. So uh, we can kind of dive right in. How's everyone doing today? Uh, those of you in the M3 Active Trader, I shared some charts this morning I'll touch on uh, here today a little bit, and we'll look at our indicators. So uh, let's see who's on live. Lisa, Private, Jay, Mary, Alex, uh, Rennie, Marsha, JJ, David, Leslie, and Mary. Welcome. All right. So, well, we have a sea of red here uh, today. Not a uh, pretty sight, but uh, I do want to talk about that. I'm seeing some kind of bearish um, signals in these markets here. What we, you know, we will kind of look at uh, our indicators, which um, signal the bottom was in. I think that's still true, but uh, let me get to some of this here in a minute. What I'm going to start out with here is some Bitcoin news, and we'll go from there. Top stories. Questions about uh, Bitcoin hit all time high. I don't really want to talk about that because I think um, you know we we want to stay focused on the near term. So this is the the problem here. The Bitcoin is dipping below thirty one k. It's tried seven times to get above thirty one k and hasn't been able to do that. So some hawkish uh, Fed um, notes. And let's see. But you know uh, the overall. Longer term is very bullish, you know, things tokenizing, real estate tokenizing, everything of ownership. Uh, the Bitcoin, uh, the BlackRock application, which uh, is probably going to take 60 days or so. And there was an article that I shared uh, the other day that some people are giving it only a 50% chance of getting approved. I think that's um, probably low, but there is still the GBTC lawsuit about getting their ETF approved. So um, let's see, hype over BlackRock and Fidelity threatens a letdown. We'll look at Bloomberg. And uh, that's still the big news It's the BlackRock ETF, but uh, that's not going to happen overnight. And some are saying it could even push out. There's a clause in the application. It could push out until March of 2024. So let's see, fire cell. So, yeah, and the Celsius, uh, they have a, um, a whole bunch of... Uh, Bitcoin that they were just allowed and released so that they could then start selling it. And we might start, you know, you, you know, I'm fond of saying, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Uh, let's kind of pull that up here and look at that because we're at a point where they were hitting resistance. And, um, you know, this is something that usually the news will coincide with a important uh, technical area. So let me uh, just do this here. I've got ETH daily, move these around and get back to the Bitcoin chart and bear with me there so there we go and um it's basically let's just clean this up a bit uh we'll dive back into this here in a moment but um yeah you know this uh this pattern here it, it's it's really hard to say because it could go either way we were looking at this trend channel i was previously looking for kind of a head and shoulders pattern on the weekly and um you know, then I thought, well, that is has been negated, and now we're in this. So we're still in this upward trending channel, but there's some some people that I, a pretty good technician, was pointing out something earlier today, and there's some bearish divergences here on this. And so, um, you know, this is one of those times when in doubt, stay out. You know, I don't want everyone to have fear and anxiety over this, and I'm just drawing some uh, lines in the sand here, and uh, just to show some things. But we've got a fair amount of overhead resistance here, right? So. That's why I've been saying we need to get up above and close above 32K right up in here, which we have not. And so the uh, back to the news here is that, you know, would this be an opportune time for them to sell off? And, you know, that could be Celsius sell pressure. Uh, you know, that would probably be a good area for them to start selling off. And that could certainly push prices down. So the concern here is this, and just in this, these four or five candles here, you know, the uh, monthly candle, sorry, the weekly back in June pushed up here, tried to break up above 32K, didn't quite get there, pushed it down. Same thing here. Uh, we had a spinning top and then uh, this sort of doji here. This is this one here is the concern, even though that it's green, it's considered a gravestone doji. And uh, with the topping top tail, not sure if you guys can see that. I'll widen it, but this this top tail. So it pushed up here around thirty, thirty one five, I believe, thirty one thousand, even up to thirty one thousand eight sixty two. So it almost got up to that thirty two k level. Sold down. So this topping tail, this um, 
it's a uh, you know there's various types of doji there's spinning top where the these are equal distance to top and bottom this is a sort of bearish doji here like an inverted hammer this is the gravestone doji which indicates further downside sellers are in control and now what we have is we have this bearish engulfing candle on the weekly so um you know this is uh i was hoping we would start to push higher here but the other issue is that we have the uh, eri is also bearish so it's uh down below i'm not sure why the arrow is not showing up on the chart but that's why we always look at both the oscillator showing a red line let's see where the week closes so that's not finished yet but also a bit overbought on the uh, tsi so um you know the, on the weekly the weekly time frame kind of dictates the longer trend uh, nothing to be terribly afraid of I, you know i think if we do come back down into these zones it would be a good sh time to pick up some more in this upward trending channel and i think uh, if we came down on this 25000 range that uh, that would be a good place to be dollar cost averaging back in mm, or somebody i was looking at watching earlier who is pretty good tech ta but he was suggesting you know we go uh break down deeper crash 15k 10k and i just don't i don't see that uh at this time certainly new information equals new decision however and we have to be nimble and aware of these things you know when the bottom is finally in and things really start to take off again usually it's, it's going to be later when people have given up you know if we pull up that cycle of investor emotions that's when people have really given up and you know I, we haven't uh, seen that right so we haven't seen that final capitulation necessarily and uh, let me just pull this up here because um yeah, it's worth revisiting and this is a slightly different version of it wait that's not what i want to show you and you know, go to images i'm on another tab so i can just bring that up here this is the one and uh yeah so there it is great all right so we'll do this hopefully you guys can see this so the point of maximum financial opportunity is after the capitulation and you know we i th i think we're either in skepticism and hope or there's another leg to, to drop down and um, but i think the bottom i believe the bottom is in and uh you know anything could happen though so what i'm suggesting is uh, remaining cautious here and so uh, even though i did go back in all in on my uh ethereum position in in my ira I'm not liking what I'm seeing here, and uh, I may go back to the uh, uh, selling half of it. And the reason is selling half, you're still in the game, and you can dollar cost average back in on a, point, a bounce point. So right in this range, let's say it comes down and starts giving us bullish ERI and TSI on the weekly for the um, the turn in this upward trend channel we really need to see this trend channel hold but see we also have the 21 day and the 51 the 50 day i'm part, sorry week the 21 and 50 week exponential moving averages now there's one more i'm going to show you that we don't really normally watch and that's just a 100 day moving average which also uh, has <clears throat> has been fairly uh accurate in both as support and resistance. So this is a simple moving average. I'll go ahead and add that on there, and we'll change that to a hundred week. Go uh, to the style. We'll open this up a bit here, make it a bit wider. Okay, so we can see that. Okay, do you see that blue line now? Uh, the uh, so let's zoom out here and take a look at this. Now the hundred week moving average is acting as resistance here so we've got all this resistance up in this range and uh and that's kind of problematic let me turn off the uh, eri and um you know it's it is hard to read the charts in coming out of the bear market you know mark yusko came on recently and said he thinks we're in bitcoin summer so we're out of bitcoin winter we're in bitcoin summer but not really in the heyday of the bitcoin rally and and we've been saying that we expect that to come in 2024 maybe even toward the end of the uh, the year but uh, again this uh, blue line here if we zoom out even farther that 100 week moving average has uh, been pretty solid as a as a guideline so when we broke it here on the uh, on the last back in 2018 you know the bear market came down sideways 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 and then it dumped and we had this deeper drop got back above the 100 day I'm sorry 100 week moving average and then it acted as support and support this was the COVID crash and uh, then again it tried to hold here once it broke that 100 week 
moving average, then, you know, we've been sort of underwater. We really need to get back above that. And that would put us closer to 33,000. So, you know, we're in this range of it's risk. It's more risky to be buying here than if we do have another pullback. Typically, uh, the pullbacks uh, on to down to support were are, are where we'll bounce. So 21 day, 50 day, or this rising trend channel. So that's what we're looking for. Let's see if we can see any other clues on uh, our indicators here. Again, a bit toppy on the TSI kind of rolling over. And, uh, you know, the I shared some pictures here this morning of some divergence uh, divergences. We will go back to the news, by the way. I just wanted to get this out. And uh, yeah, so in this chart, I'll move this over. Hopefully, can you guys see this? Sometimes it only shares the browser. And if you guys in the chat can let me know. Uh, yeah, these markets, right, Alex? So can you guys see this, this chart here? Yes, but small. All right, let me see if I can make it bigger. Essentially, you know, we have this topping area here, but the, the volume has really dropped off considerably. And if you see, I'll recreate this for you guys. But these lines here indicate bearish divergence. And usually that'll lead a price move in that direction. What do I mean by that? Well, it's lower highs on this TSI, same with the stochastics, RSI, and probably RSI as well. So these oscillators act similar. And uh, here's another kind of look at this. This is not my chart, but uh, something else, uh, another look at it. This is maybe a bit much to look at. So let's do this. We will, um, let's open this up and look at that on a weekly basis. So let me do this. I'm going to just duplicate this chart here. As uh, yeah, okay, um, I have too many. I'm always hitting my limits on alerts and things like that. So what? Um, well, here I've got another one. Uh, that's uh, that one here. Okay. Well, then what I'll just do here, just drop down to the daily. That's easy. Um, or or we'll hide uh, the some of these other indicators and add a couple more. Now I have so many lines on this one. I may have been hit my limit on uh, uh, the. Uh, uh, my subscription to the Premium Plus ran out, and so um, um, I was going to renew that. And Mike reminded me that there's always a 60% off Black Friday sale, so I renewed at the Monthly Pro because I'm like, I don't need 400 alerts or 25 indicators, but then realizing that each one of these lines counts as an indicator. Yeah, so so believe it or not, I've got 25 indicators on this chart, and I would have to get rid of some. Point is, well, you know, we don't need that because the TS the TSI is very similar to a stochastics or RSI. And so the fact that these are lower highs, get rid of these other ones, pay attention to this up here, lower highs on this TSI, and we're kind of pushing higher in the prices or at least even. So that's bearish divergence. And then of course, uh, there's another one down here. Let's see on the, um, well, that other chart, I had the stochastics CSI. So you get the point, right? And um, so I, I'm wondering, you know, this is, this is probably continue to be weak here and some more sell-off for the short term. Uh, the spot Bitcoin ETF approval, let's just dive back into the news clock to start Wednesday. It has eight applications named on the federal register. Okay, so that'll be tomorrow. And uh, so the clock is ticking for the SEC approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs will begin on Wednesday after all eight applications were listed. And, uh, you know, it remains to be seen how GBTC plays out and all that because they were suing SEC for not uh, giving theirs enough attention. Eight applications are, so there's BlackRock, of course, we have Bitwise and a number of these other ones. We don't need to go through all of them. Fidelity had thrown their hat in the ring Right, the Fidelity's Wise Origin Bitcoin Trust. That's a mouthful. And then Valkyrie and Bitcoin Shred GTF. So uh Pro Shares, uh, you know, they're they're pretty established and well known. Some of these other ones less so, but we'll see what happens. And um, you know, it's gonna be also tough for the SEC to approve one of these and not all of them. You know, some of them will uh, will get denied first initially. Probably BlackRock and Fidelity will get approved first. Again, that can take 30, 60 days, uh, maybe longer. So, you know, that pushes us. I mean, that means we have room for some pullback and downside here. And also the uh, here's the retail sales numbers came in. Uh, not so good, you know, and look, uh, let's be honest. Uh, how many of you are out there spending as much as you were even a few months ago? 
You know, the retail spending uh, is down and the economy is cooling the recession. Some are saying we have a soft landing. I don't know. I don't know. So let's see. Bitcoin remains under pressure through US rails and size sales numbers. So uh, yeah, you know, let's see this. I, I don't know. I think it's people are going to really buckle down. Uh, they're still in denial. They're seeing this this rally coming up and they think everything's fine, but everything's probably, I don't think everything's fine. And uh, so we, uh, I reserve the right to be wrong, but that's my thesis here. I'll stick you to it until until we get above 32K, to be honest. Let's see, uh, score another win for Team Soft Landing, this person says, but let's see uh, what little doubt... Well, we already know they're going to raise 25 basis points uh, and 97.3% uh, chance. They signaled that last time. The big question is, what will, their com what will their comments be on how many more interest rate increases will we have? We've probably already factored in one more, but sort of hearing rumblings are maybe three more, including this one next week. So, you know, it's just, look, it's a tough time. We have the positive news and the Bitcoin ripple case kind of push things up a bit but the fact that that didn't spark a bigger rally is concerning and tells me that likely uh, those uh, shares are getting dumped on uh, from the celsius sale uh, so the celsius fire sale is starting 63 million out of 160 million sent to exchanges people move coins from hard storage to exchanges to do what to sell and that means probably we're seeing some of that let's just see on the volume you know, still really low volume though on this. Not a lot happening. I really do think we'd get a summer rally. Uh, I'm I'm less confident in that uh, here, and obviously because we're three weeks in, and the charts are not looking as good as we had hoped. So, you know, we did sort of issue a kind of an early let's get into these markets. Uh, so, you know, in the M3 Trader group that we'll have tomorrow, and um, if you'd like to find out more about that, you can go to moonstream.io slash m3 or if you'd like to learn more about these indicators if you're watching the youtube uh, re replay channel or the replay on youtube it's crypto mastery online dot online and uh, you can learn more about this we're going to unpack this a little bit deeper this class here is more about the indicators and the news and um yeah so it's likely that the currency celsius held is uh as part of their settlement and trying to pay back their creditors celsius of course uh, famously, um, infamously blow up along the likes of SBF and um, Do Kwan and all these other ones, but they had recovered some of their assets. And since there are many creditors there, GBTC and Gemini, uh, they are going to have to sell these. So this these liquidations, some analysts have suggested, could be dragging down crypto prices. So so let's just kind of back up for a second. You know, what does this really mean, though? Eventually the sellers will leave the market there were you know there will be no more sellers left and just to clean this chart up a bit and uh and that's what we're really waiting for and um you know we have come off the lows here over 100 percent from the 15k lows you know give or take up into this rally so you know some pullback or sideways action is warranted here it's um it's just really hard to say we're we're in between a rock and a hard place as they say Above the 21 and 50 week EMAs, otherwise known as the bull market support band. And I think I have that on another chart, but uh, below the 100 week moving average. So big question is, do we, can we hold the 21 and 50 day EMAs? And if we can't, then it's, it's also known, it's sort of like quicksand. When we get below the 21 day exponential moving average, that bull market support band is, uh, it takes a while to get back up. This is a weekly basis. When it breaks, it's usually four to eight or 12 weeks below it, minimum, minimum. Okay. So we really need to see that's that hold. I'm going to set an alert here to see if we go down below. And uh, I would advise caution here. This is no, no longer a bullish setup here. I mean, it's it's trying, but these topping tails, the difference is because you're saying, Brett, last week you were saying this looks good. We're bullish. Yeah, well, it um, it was looking bullish at that point during the class. This was a bullish engulfing candle. And since it sold off, the key lesson here is always wait till that end of time period, whether it's daily or weekly, because as we know, they can make it look very good and then sell it off a little bit more. And so currently at this stage, again, bearish engulfing after the 
uh, the gravestone doji after the spinning top. These indicate indecision. Bulls trying to push it up, sellers in control, profit, likely profit taking in here. And who knows, the Celsius liquidations may have been even front running this. So not the end of the world. I think uh, we could come back down in this 28,000 range, but really need to see it hold that 27, 28,000 range. All right. So there's comments here. Let's see. Chris asks, uh, hearing on the news, the amount of homeowners losing their rental homes to foreclosure due to non-paying COVID tenants. Um, that's interesting. You know, there is a they've been there's been rumblings of another real estate bubble and a lot of this uh, discrepancy there and disagreement because I saw a really interesting video about that the 2008 housing crisis was actually they were speculating was not that uh, the junk or the junk loans, uh, subprime loans, rather, were the ones that were causing it. It was more caused by rampant speculation. And, um, you know, certainly getting easy loans by homeowners was one thing, but speculators uh, coming in and speculating heavily in massive developments and neighborhoods and things like that. And they were saying that it's worse now. My concern is the commercial side, because I know that, um, you, you know, there's a lot of commercial tenants and buildings that are empty, people uh, not like there's in Austin, I know that there's uh, uh, many floors vacant from a new building Facebook was moving into. Uh, know firsthand from my f extended family, uh, an executive at uh, Gartner uh, working at a uh, beautiful offices. They had like six or seven floors. They're empty, but they're still spending, you know, $100,000 a month. Uh, and the other, so that, that does worry me, the commercial real estate market. And so, but, uh, you know, the, some of these are questionable use cases or positives for Bitcoin. And so, you know, with real estate tanking, people will, you know, they, it, it is a delicate cycle. Risk on assets don't do well in rising interest rate uh, environments. But, um, you know, we had some positive signals here, which sort of sparked this rally. And, you know, a lot of ways AI sparked this rally. So, you know, we, we just have to sort of be diligent, and watch the signals, but we're in that process of bottoming and we'll wait and watch. But uh, currently, it's not uh, not a clear signal. Again, I think we pulled back down a bit, and and wait for some other news. You know, there will be good buying opportunities if we drop a little bit more. So your DCA strategies are worthwhile. And um, let's see, Bitcoin price. We still have hawkish Fed minutes. Digit, what is it? Digitos. I don't know what that means, uh, and that's probably uh, shilling some kind of. Digitodes, please don't go by this. Uh, let's see, this is an advertorial, I'm sure. And always be careful with these articles. And many times they're paid articles and advertorials. So uh, if you see something talking about, you know, they're trying to play off of the um, successful meme launch of uh, Pepe coin. So Digitodes, uh, trying to capitalize on that. Uh, you know, no, <laughs> I, I, it's I, I play at your own risk. If that thing goes to the moon, don't be mad, but uh, I don't think so. Tokenize that. Yeah. So this is this is where I was. This is the article I wanted to get to. So tokenization of real assets, aka real estate, is uh, in the works. And so, um, you know, ultimately, I think that could spark the recovery of the real estate market and commercial real estate market, but not yet. And so they're saying here, long. Uh, long been one of crypto's big ideas, tokenization may finally be ready for prime time. And I think that's true, but is uh, the public ready for it? And, you know, there's always the early adopters and a while, it's a while before it goes mainstream. Wall Street's diving in, creating tokens from everything, for everything from buildings to gold bars. Okay. And as we know, they're doing it with art and uh, other assets. So um, one advantage, relatively little regulatory scrutiny, and um, we don't need to unpack that, but certainly that's interesting. I just, I think it's, uh, I think we drop first and then we kind of see that um, push tokenization of real estate assets. And there, there are companies you can do like REITs, real estate investment trusts, but that's a little bit different. So this whole idea of, you know, most people and the, the, the demographic is, primarily especially with crypto investors is aging male baby boomer 
And uh, that's overall investors as well. Well, and I'm sadly sort of approaching that category, but real assets that we can see and touch and feel and go and collect the rent, uh, that that's a very real concern. Whereas pulling all of your money out and putting it into a digitization, uh, an approximation of a real asset, still kind of scary. It's it's going to take a little while for that to take place. I think you know, and probably start to see that really push in twenty twenty four institutions trying to get ahead of it. But at any rate, what do you guys think? Um, would you buy? Would you sell an investment property and then go and buy digital digitized? Uh, apartment buildings in Ohio and and uh, all you get is the the keys for your tokenization of the real estate yeah nope David says so it's that's early I think we'll get there but who, who knows there's not another I mean look how many hacks we had last year and stolen assets and it's you know that's what paves the way for security uh, is having people hack in and and you know get through it and then they fix that so, um, yeah, what's the old saying I, you guys have heard me say that uh, good judgment is the result of experience and experience is the result of bad judgment. So we, yeah, you know, I think there could be a commercialized real estate uh, market rally at some point, but um, we know we have to be careful with all of these things. But what if the next generation of crypto is not made of magic internet money and the, the non-nerds have never heard of, but the cryptographic tokenization of stocks, bonds, cars, and real life things that people actually care about. So, um, yeah, and Wall Street's starting to pay attention. RWA's real world assets, real world assets. It's quietly surged during crypto winter tokenization. Now this would be, you know, coins, uh, hard assets, things like that, somewhat liquid. Uh, let's see. Uh, centrifuge tokenized over 400 million of real world assets. Interesting. You know, it reminds me back when I was on, I was invited to a um, a Bitcoin mastermind in St. Martin. Some of you know the story back in 2013, 2014. And the uh, founders of EOS were there. There was a number of people there. I don't know that the uh, Charles Hoskinson might have even been there. I wouldn't remember. But uh, I remember Stan and Dan Larimer, and they were talking about. Now, one day you'll be able to share your favorite song and basically earn a commission on that through a crypto, you know, sort of tokenization. And we, so point is that was sort of sound like crazy BS space age stuff back then, but that's what we are starting to see with smart contracts and everything else. So that tokenized stuff can be almost anything. Artwork, uh, there's a big company that's uh, doing that. I think it's called Masterworks, where you can invest in high-end artwork without having to put in a million dollars for a Van Gogh. You can own small pieces of it. Real estate, luxury items. And uh, those of us uh, in our retire rich inner circle, this is a, a market industry we're looking into, the tokenization of real world assets. And maybe talking about this week, they can uh, all go on the blockchain and talked about uh, also how this is going to disrupt many industries, including title insurance. You know, what a ripoff that is. You go spend eight or nine grand for a company to go research the title to make sure the seller actually owns the property. Well, as soon as we can put it on the blockchain, that's no longer needed uh, or will be much less expensive because it can all be seen on chain. And uh, so at any rate, um, we're trying to get everything to tokens, and then we're going to try to see if we can wipe out all the costs of the underlying systems, this person says, as work to monetize real world assets. So we covered that. Let's see. Even intellectual property can be tokenized. That's interesting. I mean, um, I mean, one of the things I'm looking at doing is uh, building in, because I have a SaaS company, software as a service, and we're building in Web3 items and one of those we're going to be building in is auto conversion of intellectual property to nfts that would be on the blockchain uh, to prevent digital piracy and then uh, the new the new idea that uh, i shouldn't share but i will is so uh, that the uh, buyer of the, the the end user buyer could then resell that nft to someone else but the originator of the nft could also earn a portion a small piece of that profit Okay, so there's a secondary resale market potential. 
Now imagine, uh, let's see, uh, we're getting into the weeds here. We're talking about YouTubers. Tokenization lets you create liquidity that things aren't liquid today. And that's the bottom line. So keep that in mind. So let's, uh, you know, I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole here. I think we covered that. Let's see, we've got Bitcoin uh, ETF hype threatens another sell the news fizzle. So that is important to know. So, you, you know, this, I, I said that last week, the ETF push, it would be a sell the news event. We did kind of see this push up and it sort of faded that market. Um, <laughs> similar exchange traded products have existed for years. And also remember when the futures ETF launched in 2021, that's right before the peak. And so that also happened when Coinbase went public. So be wary of if the BlackRock ETF gets approved, you might see an initial flurry uh, and then a sell the news type of event. And that might be a local top for this. Uh, let's see uh, this. Uh, I'd have to subscribe to Bloomberg here, which I'm not really need, like, needing to do right now. We could just skim the headlines. Uh, why crypto on Wall Street are longing for spot Bitcoin ETF? Because it's regulated and they'll be able to pull a lot more money into those markets. Let's see. Valkyrie. Yes, uh, I sure refile Bitcoin funds. So Valkyrie had Valkyrie had filed originally in 2021. It was rejected. So they're going to refile. And uh, and so here we have here we have old Jamie Dimon. JP Morgan doubts that the approval of a Bitcoin ETF will be a game changer. Um, you know, you can't trust the word he says. He's usually buying when he says that they would never buy it. And but in this case, you know, I think they're right. I think that um, you know, especially if there's an inverse ETF where people could buy and push uh, things down. But uh, let's just sort of jump over this too. Why Bitcoin and Wall Street? All right, it's not gonna let me. Crypto and Wall Street are longing for spot Bitcoin ETF. Uh, let's see uh, the TLDR here is that it's not gonna let me read it. And sorry, it's faded. It's it's insidious how these places. I understand they have to make money, but they uh, are kind of putting themselves out of business because people don't want to have to subscribe to read the good news. And uh, we can also go over to the Daily Hoddle and check that because they've got free news. That's a good source. Let's take a look at that here. And uh, also, uh, the uh, Coin Telegraph has good. Uh, oops. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Mark Gisco is great. I would. Uh, sorry about these ads, guys. I have no idea <laughs> what's going on here. Billionaire Mike Novogratz, four wishes to trigger next crypto market rally. Here's that might be good. Novogratz is smart. Also, Chamath uh, Palayapataya, Palayahapataya, it's always a tough one, says stocks prime to go material higher, maybe. Uh, so Anthony Scaramucci, I, see, I don't know, he, Skybridge Capital, he's, I don't know. I think that means they're long. U.S. dollar will lose status as world reserve currency, says S&P Global Top Economist. We've been talking about that for some time, but yes, but this will take a while. It'll take a decade for that to happen, I think. Well, let's see. Uh, Dogecoin. Um, no, can, 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 can else. Plan B targets 50,000 Bitcoin. Well, um, you know, we'll look at the chart here. I've been pointing at 50K Bitcoin for a while. It's just a Fibonacci uh, uh, bounce in the golden pocket from the market cycle high of 2021. Uh, plan B, um, he's been, uh, oh, this is interesting. So let's get to that. Plan B, um, yeah, we could look at that. What his, he, he's been right and not so right. Let's see, Novogratz says, what does he want to see? I uh, want to see the Fed pausing. All right, uh, Ripple wins, which did sort of happen, although it wasn't a full-blown victory. Bitcoin ETF, and then the Binance CZ settles with the Feds. Yeah, so that, you know, these things will settle out. And uh, that would be a bullish uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, so no more to unpack there, I don't think. So lawyer, so this is interesting. He says the SEC unlikely to appeal the Ripple lawsuit. Why? Here's why. Um, let's see. <laughs> These advertisements, I have no idea. Uh, unregistered security last week uh, ruled Ripple automated open market sales of Oh, here the markets are actually not securities uh transactions here most happen final judgment 60 days to appeal lawyer says you know it was so so drawn out um i uh, says i've seen i think the sec will appeal if i had to guess i would bet neither side appeals 
Okay. Uh, yeah, here's why. This is what I was getting at. So the SEC has more to lose than gain by appealing. If it wins the appeal, it pulls back some adverse trial level case. If it loses, then every court in the second district court of appeals must follow the decision. Yeah. So if they lose on appeal, that opens up a lot of room for all of these uh, securities that the SEC has recently classified. So Polygon Matic and Solana and some of these other ones that got really hit hard because the SEC came out and said, Hey, these are securities. Well, that would sort of negate that. So the SEC has more to lose on losing an appeal than if they win. So plan B is targeting $50,000 Bitcoin. Here's his timeline. Before we do that, let me just kind of show you what, uh, why that's something we've been watching too. Let me just do this and just a Fibonacci on this from the market cycle high down to the low puts uh, the bounce right around 50,000 in this region. And that's that uh, 0.618 to 0.65 golden pocket. And you guys have seen that on another chart. So, you know, um, I, I think um, we've just uh, we've got a break above 32K above 32K. We've got a pretty quick an easy ride up. I think probably see profit taking here at 36K and at 42, five here. That's the 50% Fibonacci. But uh, I'd say we get there by the end of the year. So let's see what uh, Novogratz has to say. I'm sorry, plan B on that. So we land between 40 and 50,000. Well, that's a pretty uh, wide window. Uh, have... <laughs> The plan B, the biggest question is what will the Bitcoin be at 2024 April having? Uh, we could try and estimate this from this, uh, from only this 200 week moving average. So, um, you know, he has his sort of his color based um, moving thing here that seems to be colored to the Bitcoin regression band that we've looked at in other scenarios. And, um, yeah. So anyway, that's enough about that. Let's, I think we've covered the news pretty much. Anything uh, you guys want to see? I think uh, 20 to 1240, we're making good time. Let's go back to the charts. And um, let's see, I'll get back to a daily chart here. And we can take a look at some movers here if we'd like. But this, uh, it, it is looking like almost like a Bart Simpson pattern here. You know, if you're familiar with, um, see, I've got it on my computer somewhere. If we'll go find Bart Simpson. And let's show you this pattern here. There he is. Uh, the copy. Have you guys seen the Bart Simpson before? Uh, all that build up didn't let me do it. Okay. Uh, I need to pull that up again. You guys are probably one step ahead of me there with his hair and everything else. So. No. Oh, come on now. All right. Uh, it, uh, it's giving me a hard time for some reason. It must be there's two of them. Bart, it's PNG, 200 PX. Oh, it's this one. I was grabbing the, long, the wrong one. Maybe this will do it. Copy. Huh. Well, all right. Now I'm, now I'm committed, though. I've got to do this. So what I'm going to do is open this in another. Uh, another window, and uh, let's see, where would we find old Bart Simpson here? I'm in my uh, folders here. Go down to uh, images, and all right, well, I'll tell you what we can do. Yeah, so this this chart here, let's just go grab Bart here, and um, here's a good one. Okay, great. I'm going to copy that one. I've got a little tool here called Clipping Magic. It's a great little tool if you want to pull out backgrounds and just drag and drop that in there. And there he is. And do I want to do a uh, sideways copy, paste, review, covers? It's good enough. So I'll go download it. Gotcha. All right. All that build up for the Bart Simpson. Oh, come on now. Oh, that's why I had my all my indicators turned off. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, all right, I'm going to use this one just because he's already there. I don't need all of them, though. Okay. 
Sorry about that, you guys. So, so this is the Bart Simpson here. Well, I want my PN, PNG version, but you see the hairline there? This is the Bart Simpson. So basically, the more it goes sideways like that, the more likely it's going to drop. And, um, you know, since I'm committed to my uh, craft here, I got to get this just right for you guys. There, you see it? Once you see it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> Um, but this this does tend to play out and it indicates, you know, up and down and uh, sellers are in control of buyers. So the bulls can't break up through it. And we're starting to see this sort of teeter over the edge. So uh, we'll leave that down here. But um, uh, I'm not liking this chart. We're down. We're, we're down below 30,000. And so if I were if we were going to look at where we could come back down to. Uh, down into this $27,000 range would be the golden pocket retracement down in here. So the shorts are layering on this. The shorts are piling on to push it down. Let's get back to our indicators here. I'll get rid of the Bart Simpson. And uh, again, on the daily basis, uh, heading down, we're bearish on the uh, TSI. What I want to have a look at here. Uh, let's see. Uh, the radars. The radars is mostly bullish, though. We're still bullish on the weekly, monthly, and three month. And so that, um, I, I don't know, we have to wait and see. I would be lightening up on positions here potentially and uh, not not going all the way out because we could rally at any time as we know. Okay, so let's take a look at ETH. You know, ETH is uh, still, so it's coming down, it's pulling down. We've got red on the TSI and the signal line, which we've been watching. And uh, still trying to trying to hold that hundred week moving average. Now ETH is above its hundred week simple moving average, so you know maybe we need get another little kind of rally push higher. A uh, lot of maybes here. I just uh, we need a catalyst in the markets, and um, uh, we don't see a lot uh, moving. XRP is uh, it's trying to stay higher. You know I would put an alert here at ninety cents to see if it can break back above that. It could happen any time, but uh, you know who knows. Do you guys want to look at any coins? Uh, let's see. Somebody's saying, so did I screw up buying a thousand pirate a thousand dollars CDN BTC? Uh, what is a CDN BTC? Was that uh, one of the central bank? I'm not uh, familiar with what that is. This industry, uh, Canadian money. Uh, I don't know. I guess. Well, I I mean, look, it's a thousand dollars. Not too bad. Okay, somebody wants to take a look at H bar. Let's do that. All right. Let's see. Bitmex and H bar USD. It's on Binance. I guess we'll do that. Oh, uh, so H bar. I mean, it's it's also it's wholly below its hundred day moving average. Simple moving average. It has support, rising support of its twenty one and fifty day moving average. But you know, you see this selling off here. This is that resistance, that hundred day simple moving average. This is um another good chart for looking at the hundred SMA because here this uh, you know all these coins behave a little bit differently, different personalities. But look how well it's respected. The hundred day moving average here, both as resistance here and then here, and then all the way down, all through here, resistance, resistance, resistance. Finally, broke above the hundred day moving average, simple moving average, came up, acted as support all the way up here, rode that up beautifully. Okay, and now broke below the hundred moving average. So essentially, you know, what you have here is a downward trending trend channel. And um, so I would be taking profits and selling half of that position if if it were me uh, with the intent of buying it back lower. The The wild card here, though, is it, it could bounce off of the 21 and day 50, 21 and 50 day moving averages. So it's between, again, back to that rock and hard place. Uh, so what are indicators showing us on this? We have the bearish ERI, TSI is overbought. Uh, I, signals to me this is a good profit taking area bearish eri tsi mm, it's in overbought territory i would say yeah good uh half your position alex said he sold because you know that's a risk favorable trade is that because that way if it turns back down and the trend is your friend the trend channel is still intact you know, if it comes back down below you can dca back into this on the lower edge when our indicators align 
Now, this is a little bit, you know, not not as cut and dry as I'd like. The TSI or the signal line is green and up. Uh, we do have a trend indicator showing a number sequence. So, but because I'm overall bearish on the market, I think um, I would not be holding a full position on uh, on that. So what we can also do is jump over to the crypto screener here and go ahead and uh, just edit this a little bit. So uh, we don't need uh, all these different um, things in here. High, low, technical rating, yes, volume, don't really need. That'll help clear up some of the uh, change. Don't need that above zero i don't really need to see that okay and then uh, i'll go to a different um the exchanges so we're going to change the filter there and instead of any we'll use uh, just coinbase and um the ones that'll have the, the majority of the majors so we'll go over here in binance just see what's going on where's binance there it is uh let's see by answer guys okay so basically uh we have um some of these on fourth i don't know that doesn't look that's stay away from that that already pumped especially these ones on uh, some of these exchanges with margin they'll pump uh pump and dump as it were We've got uh, iris what is iris doing uh we could look at that chart i guess Uh, trying to open this up for us, you guys. Here, you know, hitting resistance at the hundred-day moving average. So, all right. Uh, I don't see a whole lot. OMG, I'm not a big fan of. I've lost money on that every time I've traded it. it kind of moves around. It's very really illiquid. Alluvium, nothing looking great. Let's see. Loom, bearish TSI rolling over. If you guys see this, uh, I'm disqualifying them pretty quickly because TSI overbought rolling over and that's a no-go. It's a non-starter for us. All right. Anything else you guys want to see? Um, let's just, let's take a look at something else here. take a look down the master list you have bitcoin just kind of in the green not uh, not huge but i just i'm wondering if we're standing up for a bigger drop and another a crash on this and so what we need to see this is hold you know these levels we'll we'll pick it up again next week we want to see can we bounce off this 50-day ema that'll be critical uh total market cap holding above a trillion dollars but uh, TSI rolling over on this daily basis. Let's see the weekly bearish ERI on the weekly basis. Again, it's for this huge topping tail. Uh, also on the total market cap, what we looked at, like we looked at on Bitcoin. And so we want to pay attention to that this year, right? So this here is not a gravestone doji, but it's a high topping tail. Even though it's bullish engulfing, uh, this, this topping tail is going to uh, negate that. Uh, interesting, though, that we're getting a bell on the weekly total market cap, but we saw that fail over here recently, so it's just inconclusive. And you know, when in doubt, stay out. Let's take a look at uh, AVAX here. We'll get back to a daily, but uh, what we're seeing is overbought. Yeah, so bearish ERI. Um, these, uh, and unfortunately, KuCoin just made sure that we can't be trading the 2X and 3X coins anymore. And at least if you're in the US, if you're outside the US, these might be some good potential trades. ERI, TSI going red. So this is a sign that this is going lower. Did it break below 80? So AVAX would be a short here. And, um, you know, if you can get the uh, leverage tokens, not financial advice, but I think that's bearish. A phantom coin also looking bearish but oversold see the difference between these two charts you've got looking at the tsi this is important you guys so both hitting resistance at an overhead moving average so this is that 100 day moving average there but it's it's overbought the tsi is in this upper area breaking down back down below the 80 line that's signals to me it's more likely to drop down faster and farther 
whereas phantom coin oversold oversold now that doesn't mean it has to go up uh it also has overhead resistance on these 21 and 50 day moving averages but i like to line up the odds in my favor so uh let's take a look at so rune as well looks very bearish now this this i don't even need our indicators yeah you know, you'll notice some of the best shorting opportunities are when they start to reject at the 21 and the 50 day when the 21 starts rolling over underneath the 50 day ema uh that's a very bearish uh, signal and i would expect uh rune to also drop let's see if we wanted to look at uh, adam let's some of these were delisted on the uh exchanges i was looking at so i have to get go ahead and get rid of some of these gala Sol. these are all on uh, gemini no more let's see let's find uh, adam here cosmos is interesting it usually beats to its own drum and so what is cosmos looking like there kind of like avax you know but but sort of in the middle not as good of a short uh let's see uh message here like says if you were on an existing if you were an existing U.S. user on KuCoin, nothing changed. Business as usual for there now. I'm, I don't think you can buy more new positions, though, Alex. I know you can't do deposits. Uh, so I was an existing U.S. user on KuCoin. And I read and I had a warning in there that I would only be allowed to sell my position. Uh, and anyway, I sold out and moved it over to Gemini. So if you have a news article on that, let me know. I don't want to get that wrong and mislead you guys. But uh, either way, though, I think that's coming. If But I'm pretty sure that's already has been implemented. All right. So, well, that's about all we have time for you guys. We're right up coming on the hour on the, you know, let's look at the monthly chart here and just come back to this for a moment and looking at our indicators. So uh, what do we have? We have a key on the monthly. It's not really relevant. Uh, we don't have any other signals. We have a TSI kind of approaching overbought territory. The uh, MACD still probably looks bullish on the monthly. So, But it is overbought on the uh, ERI here. So I would imagine that uh, this comes down at some point. And I had, uh, I had this sort of head and shoulders kind of pattern measured move that if we do drop again down around 18,000 I'm going to take that off because I want to I'm going to do new I want to reanalyze that and see that with fresh eyes we'll do that in tomorrow in the m3 active trader class so the scenarios here that I had on here since last week is either we do hold above 29,000 and push higher and that would be great because we need to get above the 32k or we sort of roll over and if we do that uh, you can't see it very well on this one, but there's a pot potential for head and shoulders. I think it's more visible on the weekly, but um, at any rate, we can unpack that in the M3 active trade or call. Let's see some other news. Bitcoin to 1.5 million. Kathy Wood says her confidence has increased. Yeah, you know, she's doubling down. Um, but there, yeah, I was reading this morning. Ark Invest is losing investors, and um, uh, they're down like 700 million. Uh, which would is isn't bad considering but um she hasn't uh, been vindicated yet all right let me trade so we've covered the news uh let's see yeah you guys there's not a whole lot else to, to go by here again if you're watching the replay here and you'd like access to our proprietary indicators these these uh which did call the bottom here in january on the monthly time frame just go to cryptomastery.online it's uh i can show you that it also appeared here and here let's see this would need to be a farther uh, out chart but uh this uh when these align the eri and tsi it's called the last three market market bottoms prior to 2018 that's why we were calling the market bottom here in january and uh and i believe that that'll hold you know people are sort of calling for lower numbers i do think we pull back but uh, if we if we broke below sixteen thousand again, I would be surprised. You know, then we'd be in real trouble. So, anyway, um, you know, stay uh, stay safe out there, you guys, and uh, be careful. You know, I would love to see our average true range flip bullish. Okay, that would be more of a macro scale that things have turned. All right, so. Let's do this and maybe just drop down to a weekly on there. You know, we are in a bullish, we have been in a bullish cycle on the 
weekly time frame. But um, if we do start to roll over on the average true range, if we get an exit single, then signal, then I think we do. Uh, we'll probably head lower for a while. It's really hard to tell you guys. Uh, Midsummer uh, and uh, trading volumes have just evaporated. See how low the trading volumes is. The last good volume month we have was was in March or week, and it's just ever since you know then the end of March it's been very low volume. You know, and that also tells you that the real direction we may not be seen until the big traders come back from their big houses in the Hamptons and the big Wall Street traders come back and they're off at the Hamptons uh, sipping on their Mai Tais right now and letting us uh, scramble for scraps. So uh, anyway, thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you're watching the YouTube channel, please like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and uh, we'll see you guys again next week. Bye, everyone.